Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna work with some zygopetalum orchids. I don't really have many videos on zygos because, well, I haven't been very good at them and also I don't think I had much luck with them. But now things are looking pretty okay. So today I want to repot these orchids. I want to pot them together. We did this before with a cat layer. Check the video down below. We created a fake specimen and it worked beautifully. The orchid is really looking good. So I want to do the same with these two orchids today as well. You have to keep in mind though that with community potting there's always a risk. There are risks that you need to be aware of. I will not repeat them but I do have an entire video about them. Check it down below. I talk at great length about community potting there so if you're thinking about it do check that video out first just so you know what you're getting yourself into. So with that said, as I was saying in our previous video, I do believe these orchids are the very same thing. So I just want to pot them together. This one didn't get a repot when I purchased it because reasons. This one I did repot, but I think I want to change a little bit the mix. I want to add a little bit more sphagnum moss to its mix because I had to sit with my eyes on this guy all summer long and it wasn't very comfortable for me. So might as well just add a little bit more sphagnum moss to give myself some leverage. So that's what we're gonna do today. Before we go ahead and do that, let me remind you that one hour after publishing each video, I am in the comments section answering your orchid related questions to the best of my abilities. This is our third video that we do this. I have to say in our first two videos, it was kind of quiet. I was a bit lonely in the comments section. Although I really enjoyed it. And as I was saying, I do work better with an imposed schedule. So I impose myself one hour, sit on the couch, keep your eyes on the comment section. So for me, it works out great. I try to upload my videos at different hours to catch you guys at the different time zones you might be in. Um, but it was kind of quiet. And in the end, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But we're gonna give it a bit more time. I'm gonna do this today and throughout next week. Alrighty, with that said, let's get into the video. Okay, first let's go ahead and unpot this one, which never actually got a repot. And you can see that the pot is just falling apart. Also, the medium doesn't look great. And P.S. Yes, I know the orchid is in bloom. And typically when you repot an orchid in bloom, there is a chance the blooms will fall, the buds would fall. But I'm okay. I enjoyed the flowers really. Right now, I think I would enjoy seeing these orchids in the same pot with fresh new medium than seeing them in bloom. Weird, right? <laughs> but it's okay. I will let the blooms be and see if they make it. If they start to yellow, it's okay. I'm just gonna cut the flower spike because the new growth will start to grow roots very, very soon and the orchid will get established faster if I cut the flower spike. P.S. Psychopetalums bloom from immature growths, so you don't have to wait for the pseudobulb to completely mature to have flowers. As the new growth is maturing, you will have a flower spike if the orchid decides to bloom. So that's a cool thing about zygos. And yeah, let's see what we have here. Well, I think this is... Sorry about that, phone just rang. I always forget to put it on silent. So what do we have here? A bunch of not so good looking roots. Look at that. I thought these roots were okay. I'm pretty sure I do still have good roots on this orchid, look at this, but I do have quite a few which are not good anymore. Oh, and the medium does not smell good. Anyway, so I won't bore you with this process. I will remove the cocoa husk or cocoa peat. I think it's a combination of both. I think I will go to the sink and rinse the roots and I'll come back when all of the orchid is completely cleaned. So I cleaned the other zygo and it's now fizzing away in hydrogen peroxide 3% and this is my zygo which you can see does have some sphagnum moss but it has a lot of this leca and also perlite. It's a little bit too airy I have to say. Can you imagine? <laughs> That's how brutal my climate is. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the moss and the medium. I'm not gonna go crazy in removing everything because this medium is a few months old really. And I'd rather not disturb the roots way too much. I'm gonna cut away any root that died. We can see here the older roots, they didn't make it. So I'm gonna leave this part as much as possible alone. I'm just going to remove the moss that has clear signs of algae and the leca as much as possible but I will not do such a thorough job as the other one. No need for hydrogen peroxide. This orchid does not have snails. It already went through hydrogen peroxide earlier this year when I repotted it. So pretty much I will remove all of these dead roots. I might actually remove the oldest pseudobulb as well because 
Yeah, it wasn't hanging on very tight. So this is a very old part of the orchid. I will remove these roots like this. They're all dead. And here are my two little orchids. Now, I did leave quite a few roots on this guy. Now that I look at it, hmm, maybe I was a little optimistic. Hopefully, I will not have a lot of them just dying off. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna let them be. This one is in active growth with the root system. This one is not, which makes it a little bit more difficult to tell which root will make it, which will not, but I will leave them be and I'll keep an eye on them to see if they remain alive. I will be using a repot me pot that I can see through. This is the biggest one, it's the six inch one. That would be 15 centimeters. And oh, there we go. I saw one which was not alive anymore. How did I miss that? All right, so this pot should fit both of the plants and keep them here safely for at least another year. I'm hoping two. And the medium that I will be using is a combination of bark and moss, no additional aeration fillers such as Leca or perlite. That didn't go so well. It's too hot here for stuff like that. So just gonna stick with bark and moss. And now let's find a nice way to pot these guys up. I want the new growths to either face the same way, which I think I will do, either face opposite directions so that I can center the orchid. I think I will go for same way direction because that will give me more space in the pot. And you'll see what I mean. So we are starting out with a layer of sphagnum moss at the bottom. This will make sure that the pot will not just sit in a pool of water and that's it. Bark will not absorb that water in the dish. Moss will. And it will deliver it to the other pieces of moss throughout the pot. And we're gonna do things like always. I will be mixing my medium as I go in the pot. So now let's just arrange the orchids inside the pot. They're a little heavy because of the flowers. Slightly inconvenient. There we go. So initial position looks okay. Let's continue with bark. This might get awkward to film though. Alrighty, I think we're looking quite great. I also watered the orchid. One thing to keep in mind with these orchids is that they don't actually produce aerial roots, or at least the vast majority of them. There might be some zygopetalums which adore air, but I haven't seen them yet. At least these ones, which are very easy to find in flower shops here in Europe, they don't really produce aerial roots, nothing like Phalaenopsis. So you wanna make sure that all of the roots are inside the pot, inside the medium. Treat it like a Paphiopetalum, kinda, when it comes to roots. Some people also get away with a peat moss type of medium for zygos. I'm not gonna go that far. I think sphagnum moss will do okay for them. And now things are definitely a little bit more watch retentive and less airy than they used to be. So hopefully this will be better for my little, well, my two little zygos. I also have a decorative pot which fits these repot me pots very well. It's kind of hard to find one, but this one works just fine. And as a side note, I did discover the greatest place to keep them. It is kind of my shadiest location in the greenhouse. I told you this before. It does not really receive direct sunshine, never, but it's not very dark. It does receive intermediate bright shade kind of all the light that it receives comes from outside the buildings whatever reflects from the outside world and also the walls in my grow space and they're doing pretty pretty great i don't think i need to increase the light for them so i will go ahead and put it exactly in the same place and we'll see how it does it is very fragrant at this hour, I have to say. And if I see that the flowers are starting to fade slowly and surely, I will cut away the flower spikes and leave these new growths just mature. And as far as the care tutorial or things of the sorts, oh no, I'm not confident enough to make that type of tutorial. In a year or two, when I get them to fully explode with blooms and roots and everything, yeah, I'll make it then. But until then, I'll just link you down below to a funny video that I made regarding the orchids which gave me the most headache. The zygos, I think they're on the first place, maybe. So you can imagine, this is an orchid which gave me a hard time all of my orchid journey. I'm not about to make a care tutorial on it, so that will have to wait. Um, I can give you the American Orchid Society care sheet or cultural sheet for it. I'll link you to it down below if you're new to Zygopetalums and read up as much as possible about them because I'm kind of a novice with them. So far, so good though. And since we're at the end of the video, I really wanted to mention a few more things about the comment tower. Somebody asked, why don't I answer comments from the previous video in the hour where I sit? 
Well, the idea was that I wanted to be at the same time as you guys in the comments, practically have a chat because many of the times there is a conversation there. It's not one reply, poof, problem solved. It's almost never all that easy. And the thing is, it's hard for me to go back to replies because there are really so, 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 so many comments hundreds every day and you might see on my previous video 50 60 comments but I have 2,000 videos total and they always get comments so in my comment feed there is a jungle there so it's really hard for me to follow up on comments that's why I wanted to be in the same time as you guys in the comment section I also am trying to publish my videos at different hours to catch as many of you on the different um, timetables you are but obviously there will be a segment where I'm not available and you're not available. Of course, I will answer comments outside of the hour as well, but the main idea of the hour is to just be there together and have a conversation. Somebody suggested that I make a live stream and that would be wonderful and I've been thinking about it for the past two years, but my internet speed here and particularly the upload speed is horrendous. It's horrible. It's like, I cannot even describe it. And I just know that the live streams will be choppy, they will be delayed, quality will be bad, you're gonna have issues hearing me. I've seen live streams go down that road before and it's not pretty. I don't wanna be in that position. Live streams, yeah, not gonna happen anytime soon, I believe. Also, this morning I made yet another poll asking you how you feel about paid memberships. I am a paying member of Flora Garden Answer and I was just seeing this morning her perks exclusive things she offers to members, uh, she offers videos in advance, and I thought, wait, maybe I can do something like that for my viewers, pretty much offer bonus stuff on top of what I already do. Maybe I can include the Q&A section there, partially there as well. I had some ideas, so I made a poll asking you how you feel about it, and I don't think too many of you are interested in the idea, and for now at least, I don't think I'm gonna tempt the paid memberships because you know me, I kind of overestimate my time and availability sometimes and it takes some time to do the badges, to make the plan, what am, what am I gonna offer, what am I gonna do, at what times, what's gonna be the bonus material for that, for the members. It's, yeah, maybe it's for the best that you're not necessarily interested because I'm not entirely sure I'm so available either. Anyway, I had some ideas of making some exclusive bonus perks for members, but I'm not sure about that. And obviously there aren't many of you very, very interested at the moment. So for now, we're gonna scrap probably the membership idea as well. We'll see in the future, who knows, if the whole membership thing on YouTube gets better and it's gonna become worth it, then we're gonna do it. If not, no trouble, we're doing just fine as it is. The problem is with the comments. So yeah, don't forget that I'm in the comments right now. Ask me if you have any questions. I'm there, I shall answer you. And with that said, thank you so much for watching today's video. Hope you have a great weekend. You know the drill, like or dislike this video below. Subscribe to my channel for regular Orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and other fun Orchid subjects. And if you like to support the channel, do consider visiting the merch store down below. Soon we're gonna have another collectible, but until then, we have other things to attend to. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.